Imbolani is no Yumva? Welcome viewers to today's episode of Load Shedding, a show that focuses on the current affairs pertaining to Africa. Today we shall be focusing on the must-watch, and my name is Case Kiwinda. When you think of the African continent, quite often you think about its wildlife. But besides that, one also has to think about the former colonizers, and you know, there was quite a few of them. There's Italy, Portugal, Germany, Belgium, the Netherlands, the UK and Oman, just to name a few. And these people ruled with divide and conquer. But they also left some positive impacts in a way with their uh, culture and the, the food, the fusion and the religions, of course. But despite that, there, was still, there is still something that gels the whole continent together. And I'm not talking about the capitalism that came in and with the, the Rambo plastic bags in every single country that I can think of or that I've been to in Africa. Or no matter how remote you went, you'd always find Colgate and Coca-Cola. No, there is still something else that is there that really beats these white man's borders. Ironically, this gel that I'm talking about has its roots in the United Kingdom. But it's right there, breathing and living on the African continent, brought to life by the voodoo charms of the African countries, and the drums and the sounds of the vuvuzela and the cheering of the crowds as they watch this gel, this football. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that by now you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Confederation of Africans Football Africa Cup of Nations Tournament. Probably one of the most underrated tournaments in the world of football. You know, sometimes I feel like African football is intentionally undermined by the West. I don't want to sound like a party pooper, but Lionel Messi is not the person that has scored the most goals in one calendar year. It is actually an African footballer, in fact. Maybe that's why I'm a bit sore, or more sore. It's a Zambian footballer by the name of Godfrey Chitalu. In one calendar year, he scored... 116 goals. Now, this wasn't just my patriotism talking. There's actually a bridge to that side note. You see, Godfrey Chitalu and the rest of the Zambian football team tragically perished off the coast in Gabon in 1993. And the tournament is to be held once again in Gabon. I'm saying once again because it was also held in Gabon in 2012. Coincidentally, that's also the time when Zambia sort of picked itself up as a team collectively and managed to hair-raisingly, despite all odds, win the tournament. It was like the dead of the Zambian, the dead Zambian players just held the live ones by the hand and guided them towards winning. Hair-raising moments, really. The first Afghan was held in 1957 with just three African countries, those countries being Sudan, Egypt and Ethiopia. A fourth one, South Africa, was supposed to be there as well, but they got disqualified because of their apartheid regime government. Ever since 1968, the tournament has been held every two years. Libya was supposed to hold the tournament this year, but because of the ongoing war there, it had to be moved to Gabon. Of course, our thoughts and prayers are with Libya as they sort themselves out. Now, the first tournament match is to be held between Gabon and Burkina Faso on the 14th of January. And I urge all of you to go and watch it, even though your team probably or your country has not qualified for it. There are 16 teams that are going to compete. And I'll tell you why you should. Every kid that is African or grew up in Africa can relate to using those same Rambo plastic bags and rolling them into a football and then playing on a pitch, be it on the grass or on some dusty pitch where there's a road running right through it. Let us not forget that we must appreciate and nurture our African players and watch them perform. And also, let us not forget that when our colonizers drew those borders for us, 
we had to group within them and somehow form a country. What really helped, I'm not saying is the only reason, but what really helped was throwing in that football and having our teams being set up and the whole country or whole respective countries regroup themselves and support that team in their goal towards winning. That causes a feeling of belonging together, no? This is why going to watch the AFCON tournament is a must-watch. That's it for today. Please subscribe to me on YouTube and on Twitter. You can follow me on Facebook. My name is Case Kivinda. I bid you all good day.